Hello out there to all you creations and creators. Welcome to another character interview. Today we have a completely different person with us who I'm not exactly sure who they are. They just kind of showed up. Hello. My name is Masha. Masha Levin. I must say, I've never seen a creature like you before. What exactly are you? Oh, well, I'm a simic, simic hybrid. I was born a Veldekin, uh, but things happened, and, well, I'm something a little different. Hmm. I must say, you do seem quite interesting, especially well, considering who else I've seen during these interviews. Well, thank you. You're not, you're rather interesting yourself, you know. I must say, that's one of the nicer compliments I've gotten this week. So where exactly do you come from? The world I come from is known as Nova Nundi. I am what they, I am what they call a lesser god. Or minor god, depending on which, which of the translations of the old languages you go for. I've heard of gods before, but never of a lesser god. Well, in my world, there are five elder gods and five minor gods. Hmm. There are only two gods in our world, and they're both complete assholes, but that's besides the point. Well, I'm pretty sure they're not all that bad. Just got to get to know them, that's all. One considers himself the ruler above all and takes all credit for anything good that happens. And the other one is just an asshole who will corrupt anything they see in their path. Well, oh, that does make things rather interesting, doesn't it? At least I get along with the one who corrupts things, since, well, I tend to corrupt a lot of stuff myself. Universes, souls, characters. Oh, that's interesting to note. I must say, despite having Silver known about a lot of characters in her time, she's never mentioned anything about you. No, that's not a big surprise. From what I've heard about my creator, she's still working a lot on my world and my story. Mm. Hasn't said much because, well, it's still very incomplete compared to other, other stuff that she's working on. Besides, it's kind of not a priority at the moment. At least that's what she says. Hmm. Ah, yes, your creator. One of those positive souls, as I like to call them. Yeah, that's one way to put it. Get on my nerve after a while, but I will say, she is rather lucky from the conversation I had with the Watcher a while back. The Watcher? I did hear about that incident, but I don't know too much about it. And again, it kind of did happen without me. Kind of did happen, and, well, my world and I know Me and my world were never really involved, so... Um, I can't really say much. Ah, uh, yes. The Watcher was kind of interesting, so Though I must say, your universe sounds interesting as well. Oh, well, thank you. If you have any questions about it, just let me know. About those gods... In my universe, our gods give powers to who they see fit. Is that something that happens in your universe? It was something similar to that. Basically, the five of us had to go through some trials in order to show ourselves, in order to prove ourselves to be worthy of wielding such power. It was very difficult, but it, it was worth it in the end. At least I think so. So you have allies that have joined you over the time? Oh, without a doubt. Plenty of plenty of people that I would consider friends and allies. Well, I would argue against the whole notion of friends and allies. It is rather, rather interesting to see how often more positive features take to uh, trusting one another. That's really the po point of it all, though. Sometimes your sometimes allies are actually enemies. Sometimes you draw 
Sometimes you drift apart, and sometimes, well, you get closer. It's all very unstable, but that's... I guess that's what makes it all the more enjoyable. When you find when you find a friend that... When you find that just those close friends who stick with you no matter what, well, they become the best things to ever happen in your life. I think I'm starting to understand exactly where Silver gets her ideals from. I'll take that as a compliment. Well, as positive as you do seem, something's telling me there's a darker side to you that you don't let on that often. Darker side? Everybody has their shadow side. That's exactly what I am to Silver, you could say. Oh, I get it. Well, I mean, of course I do. Again, like you said, it's not something I usually show, and I try to be a bit more very optimistic about everything. But even, but yes, I do have my, I do have my moments of of being not so pleasant. But then again, who doesn't? Well, some are less pleasant than others. I think even you could agree on that. Oh, without a doubt. I recently met meet, met a shadow of another, um, actually my creator's brother. Absolute asshole. But he was very interesting as well. Another creator? At least that's what the Watcher calls himself. Mm, you could say that. I don't know, I'm not a hundred percent sure, but then again, my my knowledge on the whole creator thing is very rather limited compared to other people. Well, creators are a strange bunch, considering whether you talk to a positive one or one more sinister. Fair enough. Again, but again, because I don't exactly have no too much knowledge of this, I can't really say too much about it. Or can I really give any sort of valid opinions, as it were? Well, I guess that's at least one thing we have in common. I don't tend to socialize with creations that often, so I don't know much about that. Fair enough. Still, out of everyone I've met so far, you are by far the most interesting. Unlike the others who were. Clearly dark souls themselves, you will have a much brighter side to you. Oh, well thank you. I will say though, your you sounds like a quite nice target if I do have to inquire from the other world I've seen. Care to elaborate? Uh, I guess, well... Put it simply, I'm a destroyer of worlds. Anything that I see that has lie or hope or anything of the sort, I simply crush. And anything that gets in my way as well. Oh, I see. I'm always looking for the next world to destroy. It's quite fun watching the souls scream in pain before they eventually collapse and turn to nothing but dust. Well, well, you say that you're a target, but my world's already doing that on its own. Oh, really? really? Mm-hmm. My world's kind of been imbalanced for quite a while at this point, but we get a, but we still manage to, we still manage. Not sure for how much longer, but definitely trying our best. I've See, never seen the world already collapsing in on itself. In a way, you see, we have this. We have this. Uh, what would you say? Tribe, cults. This. A uh, group of people, group of humanoids, creatures. It's kind of hard to tell what they are at, at points. They always seem to change, but we have this group of entities that like to cause havoc among our world. In fact, recently they've they actually killed one of the other minor gods, which has thrown everything off balance. 
You could say they're almost like shapeshifters, but worse in a weird way. Something like that, yeah. I've never seen many shapeshifters outside of my world, and most of the ones I know, well, they're entitled power hungry assholes. Yeah, apparently this was started by once by one specific member who has quite a lot of power within them, but I still don't know too much. All, this is all the stuff that I've been hearing from someone who was a part of it at one point, but had to had to leave to save his life. I wonder from what? He hasn't said much about that yet. Of course, I could probably ask him about it, but you know. I must say, your world is very interesting. Oh, thank you. I don't get out of Silver's headspace very often, so... New worlds are a rarity for me to come by nowadays. It's always nice to hear about other universes that, well, in their own way, are slowly being corrupted or destroyed. Oh, that's a shame. It's not really a shame, it's just a fact of time. Many good things will corrode and corrupt, and it's just, well, a way of life. Oh, that is very much true. At the same time, with the death of one becomes the life of another. You're familiar with the fe with the uh, story of the Phoenix, correct? Yes, I'm aware of it. As for my universe, it's actually tied to a mother trying to save her own chicks from death. Hmm. Well, that's well, that's very valid too. You kind of need death in order to have life, and you need life to have death. Without one or the other, well, then what's the point? Ah, uh, yes. Yin and yang. Oh, Something it's a... that has become a symbol of torment to me. Well, that's a new one. I've never heard of yin, yin and yang, but one of the Elder Gods does find a lot of... <clears throat> a lot of good with that. Something with a similar concept. Then again, being the Elder God of Balance, he kind of has to be. Well, for me, yin and yang is a symbol of torment that constantly reminds me that no matter what I do, Silver will always be there to ruin my plans. No, oh, pretty sure it's not that bad. Anything that happens to her happens to me because of that blasted yin and yang symbol she bears around her neck. Oh, I see. Unfortunately, I can't exactly harm her without bringing harm to myself. Oh, right, I see what you mean. At the same time, that does kind of throw... That do, doesn't that kind of make things a bit more thrilling as well? Something would happen to you, it affects both of them, and well, you need to change up your tactics a bit. I don't know, I'm just... I'm just kind of speaking out of my ass, as they say. Not, something, not really a phrase I like to use, but I'm just kind of rambling on at this point. Well, I would like to do something about her, considering that uh, she defends every universe I try to destroy. She constantly seems to find some way, with the help of her friends and the power of hope, to always destroy my armies and ruin my plans. It has become a bothersome nuisance, and the sooner I can destroy her, the better. But at the same time... If it weren't for her, then you wouldn't have things to destroy, wouldn't it? Besides, there are other creators out there. If you try to destroy a world, then I'm pretty sure they'll come in and try to stop you as well. It's not just the silver that you keep that you're attached to. Maybe not, but with her out of the way, things would be much easier for me. After all, I may be a demon or whatever you decide to call me, but I do still need to feed, and the only way I can do that is by creating fear, sadness, and anger. Hmm. Interesting you mention that. Because not- because all three of those are not necessarily e are not- are necessarily terrible. Maybe not, but it's hard to come by nowadays with so many positive enti entities in the world who are able to bring hope to other people. 
guess. But again, anger, sadness, and fear are not necessarily neg negative aspects. Fear is based... If you think about it, fear can be is a way of showing a person that, well, they're in danger. It's sort of a way to give... to. It's something that activates their fight-or-flight uh, instincts. Sadness? Well, well, that's not bad. Well, sadness is definitely needed to make to make all the, all the good stuff better. If we were constantly happy, well, that wouldn't exactly make things worthwhile, now would it? As for anger, well, it definitely shows that something that something uh upset you, and sometimes you need to speak out in order for it to be in order for it to change. They're all not necessarily bad. Yes, they do have some negative aspects, but there's there is a lot of positive to it as well. After all, don't you feel better after good after a good cry? When you're finally out of danger, don't you enjoy feeling that overbearing really um feeling of relief? What about anger? Finally get having something that benefits you that that'll benefit you is also pretty good, isn't it? Well, maybe try telling that to Silver, since she seems to be the person who has a problem with me creating more anger and fear and sadness to feed off of. Hmm. It really is... I guess it really depends on how it's all done. I must say, I might not be the most conventional person when it comes to a creature that feeds off of emotions. But I wouldn't have to destroy universes if my own land wasn't dying itself. Ah, there it is. I honestly don't give a damn about the people who live in the same world as I do. I just want to make sure that I don't die alongside my world. And if that means I have to destroy other universes, then well, so be it. Hmm, interesting. I guess I just found myself more drawn to the one Silver protects for personal reasons, but it's not important, really. Must be. To give a brief summary to not dwell on for so long, we both used to be alive, I guess you could say. And I ended up getting her kicked out of her home and eventually banished to the multiverse. In return, I got the powers from the old Shadow Queen. And well, here we are. Hmm, I see now. I guess it's more the fact Silver isn't exactly a big fan of me after, well, corrupting her entire home, but... I must say, it was fun to see so many souls wail out of pain. Ah, oh, yes, the old evil, evil queen loving the suffering of others. <laughs> what can I say? It's quite a nice sound to listen to. Well, to each their own, I guess. I wouldn't expect a more positive creation to understand. Don't get me wrong. I think it's absolutely horrible. But not my world, not not my story. I have no power over it, and there's nothing that could be done about it. It's already happened. So at this moment, all I can do is just listen. Just listen to the stories. I must say, you're one of the more calm, positive creations I've ever met. Oh well, thank you. It's actually nice to be able to sit down and talk for once without either having somebody ready to rip my throat out or having somebody who basically wants nothing to do with me and wants to take my power for themselves. Well, I, well, despite me trying to be a, trying to be a very positive out, outlook in my worlds, I do understand the more darker parts of it. Like I said, you can't have life without death, after all. I must say, you definitely are a strange one compared to everyone else I've met. If I ever stumble across your universe, 
I might have to just leave it alone, despite it already crumbling in on itself. I'm not sure for how much longer, though, but you know. I don't know what's going on, what's going to happen with my world. Well for, well, for once, I hope for the best for your world. Oh, well, thank you. But with that said, I must return to my own duties. After all, those universes aren't going to destroy themselves. Alright, this was rather fun, even if it was short and we only talked about you, but you know, it happens. Well, if that's the case, I don't have to leave right away. Is there anything you'd like to share about your universe? Well, let's see. There's about, let's see. Well, there are, there are a lot of interesting things about my world. Um, are you familiar with the uh, tabletop game uh, uh, Dungeons and Dragons? I've heard briefly about it, mainly from the Silver's perspective, but I've never really seen it personally. Alright. My world is based in, is based in a Dungeons & Dragons um, inspired world. At least that's what, that's what the creator tells me. It has quite a lot of going on for it. You have your elves, your dwarves, your dragons. Oh boy, do you have your dragons. As well as some more, some of the more interesting aspects. For example, my race, the Vel Velikun. Basically, we are amphibian people. We are amphibian people. I just so happen to grab some really good. It just so happens that when I became the goddess of life, it, I got a couple spanky new, uh, uh, new changes to my to myself. For example. This is something I never really like to share, but you know, just for this once, I actually, I actually grew a couple of tentacles when I became the became a goddess. Really? It felt weird at first, but they've actually been really useful. I use use them a lot. Oh, I completely forgot. I completely forgot. I have yet to introduce my two friends. Oh, your friends. Mhm. Mm this big grumpy lion right here is Aslan. He's been my companion for many, many years. And this little, and this little fuzzy ferret, his name is Gandalf. I recently got him from my, t from after the time of becoming a, becoming a monster hunter. But he's always just been nice to have around. He's a, he's very chill. I've seen many lions in my time, but. Ferrets are a bit more of a rarity, considering I've never seen many demon forms of them. Hmm. Well, he's a very... he is a very... Uh, he's a very friendly friendly person. Usually, he's, usually he just hangs around around my neck just to kind of relax. Sometimes goes to nuzzle a friend or two if if you ever come across one, but that's kind of that's been kind of rare as of late. Let's see what else what else can I tell you about my world? You have any questions? Uh, that do you have any questions that brewed up after some of the information I've been telling you? Well, you mentioned the fact that there are several gods in your world, correct? Correct. Mm hmm. You've already talked about the ones that bring to balance in nature, so what are the other gods? The f well, the five elder gods are reality, balance, sky, earth, and change. The five minor gods are time, space, life, justice, and... Oh, what was the last one? Oh, right, emotions. Although, we've kind of been... Like I said, we are down one. We've... The god of emotions got killed us recently. A bit sad to what happened to him. Is anyone aware of how he was killed? There are a few people who do know, although for the most part it's well, it's remained a mystery. The only reason I know is because one of the people who was there when it happened actually came to me. Actually, he was he was the one that he's the one that I told you about that was part of that other 
of that race that's caused a bit of a lot of chaos in our world. So there's a good chance he might have been the one to uh, kill on that said god. Not from what he's not from what he told me. Apparently it was a friend of his that he trusted very well who went a bit off a rocker and decided and killed him for reasons that he couldn't comprehend. I must say, say killing another entity or at least one of higher power for going insane is something that unfortunately is not new to me. Nah, apparently that's not the apparently this isn't new for them either, just this one had some very dis very terrible consequences. So what exactly do they do if a god is taken down? Well, that's the thing, we're not sure. This never really has happened. At least not this level. There have been people who have injured injured the uh, minor gods, me included, I'm not gonna lie, but no one to downright kill. It's never been on it's never been heard of before before then. That is actually quite the mystery. Yeah, I have to ask. I have to ask my fr uh, I have to ask Toka about that. But he's been kind of quiet on details because, well, his knowledge of what happened is very limited as well. He didn't really know about this until it happened. Is this person another friend of yours? Toka? Oh no, that's that's the one I'm talking. That's the uh, one that got that ran for his life. Ah, I see. It actually is quite shocking even for me to hear a god being killed. We've never had that incident occur in my, my universe. <sighs> Appa apparently, from what he told, she wanted to kill a minor god in service to their to the elder god that they uh, they worship, which is the god of change. But apparently, that meant kill that meant killing a. The minor god that they actually can that they actually have connection to. You see, we minor gods were once were once part of this world as mortals, but we were chosen to become something better. And we all come from different races. For example, with me being a Veldican, the if I remember correctly, the god of, the goddess of time is a human, while the while the god of space is an elf. No, not a human. Uh, a I believe it was a dwarf. And then the god of, and then the god of justice is a dragonborn. So all the gods come from different races to uh, try and create peace in a sense. Exactly. The god of, the god of emotions was one from this creature from this one uh I guess kind which was which is known as an Etico. They were said to be shadow people that watched over the lands, but also had the ability to become dragons themselves, for reasons that I'm not too sure of, actually. Although Kurita said it had something to do with their Elder God getting that same thing back when, back in an old world, but I don't remember. I'm, I'm honestly not too sure. I must say, your universe is one of the most interesting I've stumbled across thus far. Yeah, thank you. So, about your... Comrades, as you mentioned before, are you a team of sorts? Oh, uh, you could say that. Let's see, there's me, there's Aslan, there's Gandalf, there's my boyfriend, Orion, and Toka recently joined us. That is quite the team, I must say. Well, you say it's a team, but I consider it more family at this point. But then again, that's just me. It must be nice to have people you can consider a family. I'm pretty sure you could find a family if you look, if you, you know, try not to kill the world. Uh, most likely not. I've pretty much demolished any and all trust between. Uh, People who are exactly opposite of me, and even people who use even the same kind of magic as me. What kind of magic do you use, actually? 
mainly dark magic, the ability to resurrect the dead, corrupting souls, anything you can imagine that falls into that category. So a lot of necromancy and corruption, got it! Yes, I've had the pleasure of meeting other entities with such magic, but... We usually didn't get along very well, or... They wanted to steal my magic to become more powerful. That's the funny thing though. C Dark magic is actually a very broad term if you think about it. If used, the, if used in the right or wrong way, depending on look at it, anything can be dark magic. Usually the more typical dark magic would be necromancy, shadow magic, all that stuff, but... They usually say that as being the most destructive of it all, but if you think about it, all magic is destructive in one way or another. Healing magic, for example, healing magic can be used to, to destroy the undead. Or, you know, any sort of elemental magic can be just as destructive, if not even more so, because, well... Using stuff from the natural world is can cause a lot of changes that that no one's ready for. Or you know, illusion, illusion magic can mess with one's sanity. That Apologies for my little tangent there. That's always something that kind of bothered me. No, to be honest, I somewhat see where you're coming from with that. And if I'm being even more honest. Silver is more of a hypocrite than people tend to believe. Oh? She tends to claim that my version of magic is evil, and that it only is meant to destroy the world, but she herself is a natural-born dark magic creator. At least, that's the term we use in our world. Hmm. I see. So, she's very hypocritical in that sense, but nobody else in my universe seems to care or even notice. It can be frustrating at times. Well, I could imagine it. Oh. Sometimes, the sometimes the hypocrites that are the loudest, in one way or another. Sometimes they don't mean to, sometimes it is out of some sort of malicious content, but... That's really up to the person in gen in question. I truly believe Silver doesn't see her own dark magic as lethal because, technically speaking, she does use it for good. But if she were to ever find out its true potential, I wonder how long it would take for her to become corrupt in a sense. Only time would tell, it seems. You can have dark magic and not be and not really be corrupt. I mean I'm the I mean I'm the goddess of light of life, but that also means that I have elements of death itself. Not, of course I'm not gonna use it for any bad words, but I know others who could use it who could use it in more with more ill intent. That actually does bring up a curious question as we don't have a god of life, but we do have uh, many people who train in the art of healing, so... As the god of life, what exactly do you do yourself? Oh, what, let's see, what can I do? Well, healing of course is one of them, because, well, that comes to the territory with life. I also have a lot of close connections with the natural world. I mean, the fact that I have two animal companions probably says quite a lot. But I can also do summon quite a few other stuff if I wanted to. There's also the fact that I could speak with the dead if, if needed to. Although I don't do that don't do that too often, but and often enough, I guess. Uh let's see, what else can I do? Well I can I'm also able to change my own shape into whatever whatever I see fit. I do like my I do like how I currently how I usually look, so I never really do it, but there are times where I will change my race for one way, for one reason or another. That actually does bring up another point I'm curious about, as in the main world that me and Silver tend to stay in, known as La Familia, there are some creatures who are not accepting of other species. 
Is that something that happens in your world as well? Quite a lot, actually. There is a lot of racial tension. And it's kind of, I'll admit it's actually kind of disheartening to see that because, well, they all, all the races need each other t in order to live, but some of them are, some of them act very haughty about it, while others are looked down upon. Some, to some, to some of them I do understand. I mean, with the Edicos, considering all the damage they've done, I can see why they are mostly despised, but even still, not all of them are bad, just a, f just a handful. It's really a case of the minor the minority outweigh the major or the minor minority are louder than the majority. Ah uh, yes, that is a problem in my world as well. When one single individual of a particular race causes destruction, it becomes very easy to blame that entire race. It's actually quite the problem for the dragons and griffins in particular. Hmm. Really now? The two are constantly at each other's throat for territory during uh, dry seasons or before winter for food and such. And it usually takes all the kingdoms coming together for them to finally settle on an agreement. Only for it to backfire and, to, and for them to go back to fighting each other. Quite entertaining, actually. Hmm. That's actually rather sad. I suppose, but... It's their own fault, really. Neither of them can accept the fact that just because a few uh, griffins are known to be greedy or a few dragons are known to be destructive, that that doesn't define what the kingdoms are as a whole. Well, I guess. I must, I must ask, though. Do certain races in your world worship certain... Uh, Gods or entities or whatever you decide to call them more, more so than other races? Mm, that's a bit of an interesting question because, well, as a whole, there are there do tend to be more, um, there tend to be races that worship one god more than another, but there are, the, there are those who don't believe in, in us, which is completely understandable at times, so I'm not gonna lie, but, well, how do I put this? Um... It's a case of there are cases where that there are times where that's not the case, when other times that there is. Usually, each race has their own main uh, god they worship. For example, the gods worship the god of time, uh, the god of space, while Veldikins worship me for well, rather obvious reasons. <laughs> I hope that does make sense. It does, and. Again, with my universe, it's more so celebrating uh, stories from certain packs, clans, or kingdoms, really, rather than gods. Gotcha. Actually, speaking of the gods, do uh, your gods get along often, or...? Oh yeah, without a doubt. We do get along quite well. The only ones that we seem to have a bit of trouble with is the El is one of the elder gods, but that's that's more of a case of we tolerate her more than we actually than we actively despise her. Well, at least you gods have your heads on straight. Oh. I already mentioned how there's two main gods in my universe, and. They only come to peace every five years. And that's just to uh, try and keep a balance in the universe. But as soon as that maybe hour long meeting is done, they're back to being at each other's throats and constantly blaming each other for the damage either me and my group cause or for the saving that Silver and her team cause. 
Ah, I get ya, I get ya. It actually is quite refreshing to hear of gods that actually get along with each other. Really, if you think about it, you can't, the gods kind of need to work together in some way in order to, for the world to continue to work. One word of gods means, well, everything falls apart. And it's kind of sad to hear about that because, well, if you think about it, if the gods aren't getting along, then they're kind of not doing their job, are they? No, that's more so been resorted to me and Silver at this point. It's probably actually how she found that yin yang symbol in the first place. Fair enough. So, I have heard of another universe Silver is a creator of that has three gods that do actually get along. Like I said, it's quite refreshing to see. Oh, that's good. What sort of universe is it? If you don't mind me asking, I'm just. It's just more pure, pure curiosity. I. I don't know much about it myself, considering that's actually one part Silver's been able to keep me away from. But I do know a little bit about the gods. There's Ina, the goddess of the sun. She mainly watches over the day. Lunas, goddess, god of the moon. He guides wandering travelers by night and protects those who are active during that time. And there is a third god, though I don't know much about him. Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. If I could, I would love to pop in and just kind of see how it's like. I tend to be a bit of a curious soul. Well, if I ever manage to get Silver to actually listen to me for once... Maybe I can discuss with her, bring you to that world for a little bit. Oh, I wish I can get in touch with her. She's usually more active than I am, considering. I usually only activate when she is low or on weak emotion. Actually, will that explain why you're the one who's doing this interview and not her? Oh, this time it's more of, I just decided I want to take over for a bit of fun. Ah, you got bored. Pretty much. Well, I do love, to some extent, watching poor innocent souls scream in pain. It, even that gets boring after a while. So, I decided to just take over for a bit. Ah, I get you. I get you. I've never had that happen to me, but, you know, it happens. Consider yourself lucky, then. It's hard to be boring while technically... I guess being a demigod for sake of uh, trying to use the right term. Hmm. I must say, you have actually been the first person to uh, try to understand me and I am actually quite grateful for that. Oh, really? Well, most positive souls tend to uh, push me away because, well, I embody evil and darkness. And most dark souls tend to uh, want to take over my throne or just steal my power in general. So. To talk to somebody who actually understands where I'm coming from is a nice change of pace. Well, I don't exactly agree with it, since I'm pretty sure other, a lot of my allies and friends would probably try to stop you. Honestly, if you did, if you did try to do more, I probably might want to step in. But at the same time, not re again, not really my place to, not really my place. And to be fair, you haven't done anything aggressive to me. You've just been asking me questions. Now, if you had shown any sort of aggression, I probably would have tried something already, but this has been but it's been rather pleasant on your end as well, so I have no reason to get aggressive myself. I would have no reason to attack or otherwise harm you unless you were intentionally standing in the way of whatever it is I choose to spend my time doing, aka destroying universes. Oh, I guess we're in the right past then. I guess we are. Oh, 
Oh, that's totally fine by me. That is quite fine by me as well. I must say, your universe has actually been quite the joy to learn about. Oh, thank you. I don't often get to have the chance to learn what a universe is about personally because as well has to keep up the reputation of being the destroyer and or people don't like taking the chance to actually explain their universe to me. Well, that's a bit of that's a bit of a shame, isn't it? It is, but I mean when you are a destroyer of universes, it should be expected. That's fair enough. Well, this has been this has actually been a very engaging a uh, little interview. I agree. I will say that when Silver, when Silver eventually regains control at the end of the month, unfortunately, I will have to bring up the fact of her talking to you again. Hmm. It'd be fun to talk to her. I like meeting new people. She does as well, so I'm sure you two would get along quite nicely. Yep, I believe we would. Well, I'm afraid I've overstayed my welcome, and I must take my leave as of now. Maybe one day our paths will cross again. I really do hope so. This was rather... this was very enjoyable. I agree. And to any viewers, creations, or creators watching, thank you for tuning in this time. And I'm sure I will see you all again very soon. Bye.